<laughs> Hello, everybody. Carl Abbott here. Hey, I've got a new shirt. <clears throat> it's not technically new. It's from the thrift store. My mother got it for me. Um, but it still has that thrift store smell. But fortunately, you guys can smell it. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not too bad. Hey, so some quick announcements before we begin. Wait for people to come. Uh, what's been going on? So um, I'm on the final, I think one of the final steps of the uh, shamisen. Oh, I think last week I mentioned that I sent my dough off to Japan uh, for my homemade shamisen to be skinned with uh, the ripple skin by my friend Kiju. And I believe I mentioned that. I asked if I could send it and he said, sure, uh, no problem. I didn't actually ask if I could send it you know, at that day or something. And I did send it. Um, and then it arrived like in the, a week later. And I checked the tracking and it said, you know, in Saitama. So I wrote him and said, hey, uh, the package is here. Here's the tracking number. And he said, oh, I'm off to Paris, like literally to the airport to go off. Hey, howdy. Um, yeah, I'm off to Paris for Japan Expo. And, you know, the delivery man was on his way to deliver the package. So I thought, okay, no problem. It'll come back. It'll just be sent back to, you know, California and I'll just resend it again. But hey, Jose. Um, but as it turns out, I'm, an hour later, uh, the, the tracking number said delivered, like final delivery. So I was like, okay, well, Kiju's not there. Uh, so who picked it up? So I freaked out a little bit. Uh, um, but he said, don't worry. You know, it seems like it arrived safely, so don't worry about it. And apparently there's a basket in, in the building where packages are dropped. But it was, you know, there for about a week in that in that basket. Fortunately, it's Japan, so pretty safe. Even though there's, you know, always crazies no matter where you go. Um, and in, in long story short, too late. Uh, he came back and it was there, so he is skinning it um, pretty soon. So I'm really looking forward to that. It's gonna be awesome. Um, so with that done, the last thing I have to do is one install the kamigoma, but that shouldn't take too long. Uh, and then make the itomaki. I have all three done. Um, the third one is still hardening the epoxy, but it's fine. Um, and it's been sanded. Uh, it's been sanded to uh, you know be nice and smooth. Uh, only thing with it, <clears throat> well, I let's see. I got some new belt sanders. The uh, I believe I think it was new the one I put on, but the Snake wood is so hard that it wore the belt um, down really quickly. And at, at that point, you know, after sanding it to get it flat, it takes quite a while because it's so hard. And then touching it, um, it's so hot, it builds up a lot of heat. It's almost worried that the epoxy would, you know, crack or fail there. But I, hopefully it's fine. Hopefully. <clears throat> and, and that was just really to take off, you know, a millimeter where it was uneven here. Next I have to m taper this down, take off in total maybe a third of the wood or so. Um, so I'm hoping I just got these today, 50 grit belt sanders, uh, sanding belts. Um, hopefully it's rough enough that it can take it down easily. Otherwise chisel might be the best option, but still that wouldn't be ideal. Okay, so that's, that's the update on this. Um, oh, next, let's take a look at a shamisen I skinned. So this was part of Personal Cam. This was uh, Mike Penny's shamisen, uh, which he called the zombie sen. It, the skin had broken, I think on both sides, and his student wrapped uh, packaging tape around the whole the whole body so it could still be played. It sounded really thunky, of course, but it was playable for whatever gig. And the uh, sol had been stepped on, so it had cracked you know, this way, if this is the top side. 
So I think two years ago or so, I fixed that all up and using it for a student. Um, but I had skinned it. This is the Tsugaru one. I you had used um, my regular kisen, my wooden uh, clamps, basically. And you know, it's so hard to get this tension tight enough because usually the well, the, the kisen will slip out if it gets too tight. Um, just the wooden ones aren't really meant to handle in, in a high, high tension. That's why I believe, I think, kato-san, shamisen kato and such, they use um, quite thin skin for the uh, tsugaru shamisen. And thin skin can be have a nice, brighter, tighter sound with lower tension. And to have a thick skin, it needs to be stretched much tighter to get that same kind of uh, nice quality. So that's where the metal machine comes in. Uh, so, oh, um, Carl, hey, Carl. Uh, hey, Kyle, I was wondering if you can skin shamisen. Why did you send yours to Paris? Great question. I sent mine to Japan, and the guy who did it was going to Paris. Um, I don't know how to, I don't actually, I don't have this kind of skin, uh, this ripple skin. I suppose I could buy it somewhere. I mean, the person who makes it. Um, I might do that at some point, but it's kind of a whole different ball game um, in terms of like getting the kind of super glue that can um, attach it on. Because it's a specific kind that's thick, thick enough. It's not epoxy, but it's thick enough that it'll hold it down. If it's different kinds, it pops off really easily. And the one thing is um, cleaning up, like for experimenting, stretching it on, putting it down, if it pops off, cleaning off the surface again. The super glue is so uh, hard to deal with because you have to use, I have to use like um, paint removers and kind of toxic things to really get it all off to uh, reapply. So I've been just lazy and, and not lazy, but the, I, I really like using the natural skin goat skin in this case and that's much easier if something if it breaks or something happens the glue is water soluble so it's easy to clean up and just do again um and so for my my shamisen i want to use the ripple skin um, but who knows maybe another one i'll use the goat skin because the goat is nice too i do like it um okay what was i oh yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so i skinned this for my student yeah, two years ago or so. This side is with uh, my old wooden clamps and such. And yesterday, or the day before, I skinned the top side with my new machine and thick skin. So we can, let's have a listen to the difference. I've been feeling bad because at this tension right here, find quite loose though um, at least hearing him in a class it just it wasn't satisfying for me he he, he doesn't complain um, but I compared to now here's the top side ah oh, so much nicer On the finger, you can feel a nice, it kind of springs back. Whereas this side, it kind of, the finger ever so slightly um, pushes in. Not as much uh, uh, spring back. So I'm so stoked with this. Uh, yeah. You keep nailing it, Kyle. Is there a joke? Did I miss something? Um, <clears throat> uh, fun fact before we begin. Uh, is that worth saying? I might as well. Is it? Who cares, though? Uh, yeah, I might as well say. Um, my friend who kind of taught me this, or at least 
the finer the finer points of the kawahari, the skinning. For this kind of skin, he recommended uh, 20 minutes, uh, just wetting it for 20 minutes. Um, otherwise, if it's too deep, it's hard to hear the, apparently, hard to hear the tone as you're stretching to kind of know when it's the right tension. But when it was only 20 minutes, um, I, it couldn't stretch the skin enough to get the dough through. The clamps, basically, uh, the clamps were coming over to here. So when it's time to use the jack to push it up on the skin, the clamps are in the way. Um, but the skin wouldn't break because the goat skin is so strong. Um, so the skin would just kind of slip out through the clamps. So anywho, for this skin, I used a one hour soaking, a one hour wetting, and it stretched so quickly and so easily. But yeah, it was harder to hear, you know, the right sound because it was so um, saturated in the water. So the way to really tell is when the jack you know, pushes up against the skin, once it gets above the surface, you keep pushing it up. Um, and basically you just push it up until you feel that spring. Uh, and it's kind of like you know it when you've got it. And then when it dries, it gets even tighter. So cool stuff, cool stuff. Okay, enough talking about that. Um, we're gonna get started. Um, ooh, Krell has a fan. Um, let's see. Oh, Krell, you should do a flavoring Nasaburu Bushi live stream. Yeah, I should do that. The song is so cool as it is. Um, I wonder how I would do that. mention Mike Penny will be coming here next week we're gonna do I think live lesson on Friday about this time 1 p.m. Uh, stay tuned or come on over if you're um, have time uh, I'll be doing uh, chop builders and other fun stuff yeah yeah Johnny Pete you could do a Yasabarabushi live stream it sounded really good I'll, I'll do it. Um, we just finished flavoring week, flavoring month, though. That's okay. Hey, uh, speaking of uh, flavoring month, week, Johnny, glad you like your shabu. Love your shabu. Awesome. Um, let's announce the winner of the flavoring contest, the Shamisen Live Flavor Edition. Uh, Jose, glad you got yours in at the last minute. Uh, the winner, only two people... Contested. The only people, two people, uh, entered the contest. Shame on everybody else, in a nice way. Um, yes, the winner is Michael Makado. I think that was his last name. Uh, really enjoyed your. Uh, I like both of yours, of course. Um, Michael's had a cat. Um, even though I'm not a real cat fan, but it was kind of fun, though. In any case, um, he wins. Uh, one copy of Frosty, A Retrospective Christmas, which features not only myself, but Regan Fuji, Masahiro Nita, Kevin Metz, Mike Penny, and other great players. Um, two Bachido stickers, vinyl, great quality, a Bachido adhesive embroidered patch, and a button. So congratulations, Michael. I will send that off to you uh, tomorrow. Uh, yeah, we'll, I'll... Uh, figure out what our next contest will be maybe in a few weeks. Maybe Mike's, whatever Mike teaches next week kind of could be the subject of the contest. Ooh. Um. <laughs> yeah, close it. 
Use, use your two cats, you can beat Michael's one cat. Okay, so um, we're gonna get back to some this month um, drills and whatnot. Gotten some suggestions. Uh, what's his name? Oh, um, Pepper, Sam Pepper, uh, wanted to have a Jonkara learning how to kind of go down the sol for the ending phrase or second half phrase. That kind of thing. So we'll be doing that maybe next uh, week or week after. Um, today we're going to do a hammer-on drill. Just thought of this last week. It's pretty cool, maybe, maybe not. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. We'll see how it goes. So we're in the key of C, Miyagari. CGC. Um, so, our first is going to be dong, dong, dong. Schneider, your name sounds familiar. Um, I think, did your mom write me a couple months ago or something? Uh, oh, no, glad, glad you're fans. Cool stuff. Don't, don't, boom. Ah, yes, okay. Oh, nice to, nice to have a connection. Uh, that, was, that was a lovely letter that she wrote. Um, brings back memories of when we were doing our Abbott family, Abbott family band and Abbott broadcast and all that kind of stuff. So, yay, good to hear from you. Um, on the third, don, don, don is when we're going to start. We're going to strike. We're going to hammer on two, three, four. And we'll most likely have to use our index ring, um, index middle and ring finger. And the important thing to have this very audible is is just a really uh, confident, solid planting of the finger. I think actually a bit of distance, starting with a bit of distance so you can get some momentum going, as opposed to uh, just having, you know, um, a few millimeters, going from a few millimeters up. Really, bam, nail that down. Like that. It'll be zero, hammer on, two, three, four. We'll start that at a slow speed and um, repeat. Let's go to solve. All position. So we'll do questions about that particular motion. If all is well, it depends on the shamisen, but when you reach four, that should be able to have some sustain, I think. Especially if you get that rubbing there. What you if you want something to be repeated. Or what 
bridge section. It's okay, I've got time. <laughs> um, we're halfway through the drill now. I think, try try that out. Um, go, go higher and bam, nail down. Like that. Um, it should be pretty audible, but it depends on the shallow sound. So Again, I didn't plug in the laptop. We're running out of power, just a moment. I do need that. So. Quick mention, um, Shaka International Shakachi Festival of Prague, uh, the people who run that wrote uh, last week and s uh, expressed interest in maybe doing a joint um, joint collaboration thing of at the same time as the Shakachi Festival, personal camp, International Shakachi Festival of Prague, to have Shami Camp at the same time in Prague. Um, don't know... It, about the funding, because we'd have to get like a grant funding or whatever, but um, if all goes well and such, maybe we'll do Chami Camp Prague 2019, September or so. So those of you in the EU, if Prague isn't too far away, uh, hope to see you there. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay, let's see. Next step, yeah, right? Next step is to join the club of people who bled on your shamisen. Um, did you hear that story about Mike? Oh, oh yeah, Carl, you bled on your shamisen. Mike Penny, too. There's a, in the, in the pre-Bachido lore, not even connected with Bachido, in the uh, Mike Penny, Kevin Metz, uh, you know, the original lore, I guess Mike was playing on stage somewhere. I don't think it was 
uh, at a tournament, but he was doing such, and then he he flacked his pinky on the edge and was just like bleeding over his shamisen as he was playing. I don't think he even noticed he was just doing that. Um, but Carl, uh, it would be, I think we, I, I were, we just started communication and I just said that he had to, um, or they express interest in doing the joint thing because it's, you know, it's, it's all about kind of promoting the Japanese cultural music, music stuff. And I said that, the, you know, being able to fly instructors out and covering those costs is, is mandatory before, before, I mean, it's the most important thing. So who knows if it will happen, but um, it was the International Shakuhachi Festival of Prague. Um, they held, held a camp over the past 10 years or more, I think. They once held a camp in Australia, Japan, Colorado, I think, somewhere. Um, but it was really Prague was the pl seemed to be the place where it was the right, the right cocktail of uh, people coming and administrative wise who could kind of get the camp going solidly and such um, thus it's being held there it's been held there for a few years i believe and this year this september it's it's held in um what's his name uh jamie's instructor nobuta 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 yamaguchi i forgot my bad he is is doing a master class there Whew. High-level high shamisen there. Uh, Barcelona, I'd like to go sometime. Um, oh, Connor, that's great. The right amount of pills. Okay, um, where were we? Do, 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 do. Yes, metal inspired, though I'm not sure which band I got inspiration from. Probably just the general. Then we're going to do a reverse um, hajiki. I believe. And you could go, okay, here we go. Will be four, hajiki to three. It is a little messy. Hajiki to two, zero. Personally, in this kind of case, I find it easier to pull off by pushing out then to pull in, just the way my hand is positioned. questions oh I didn't know Pilsner is the Czech beer uh, but I found it delightful all the same with the right amount of Pilsner yeah right
Um, so one stroke per phrase, right. One stroke per string, too. Yeah, one stroke per phrase, one stroke per string. Let's add in <coughs> in the don, 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 in that space, we can do six hajiki to four, and then six, and get a little vibrato there to have that ring out. Actually, put in something, get in a little bit of flavor in. Oh, don, 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 da, da, da. In this space, don, don, da, 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 da. In that don. I think we could add another note, maybe. Switch to shabo. And see how we're doing. Why didn't you, why didn't you uh, join the uh, contest? Could have won some serious swag. <clears throat> okay, um, giant pizza, I'm on the way down. I'm having trouble hitting the four, so. Oh, uh, that's four will be struck. You'll be striking that with your bachi. Um, my pinky needs some extra power to do hajiki on the ichinoito. Yes, let me switch cameras. Yes, um... Velcro. Uh, um, I'll just address this first. Um, yeah, yeah, so, um, on the down, each, each... Each string we play, we're gonna start with striking uh, the bachi. So, oh, first string. Four we strike, so that should be fine if you if you strike with the bachi. I don't think that would be a problem. Oh, the timing. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll take some time. Oh, Sam, you didn't have to play a full song. You could have just done a a phrase or. A... Thing. Um, that's okay. Next time we're gonna do some seriously cool drills uh, coming up next week. Mike Penny will be here and do some shop builders, so we'll do a different kind of contest, um, not flavor based, even though that's fine too. Um, 
It can help with the precision to use your pinky on Nino toe instead of ring finger, as your brain will have the finger in mind and know which interview to, inter, interval to move. You mean for three? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you know, it's all fine. Um, if that makes it work, then might as well. Um, <clears throat> um, ring fin um, pinky for each in toe. That helps to, you know, again, start uh, start from on high, like, like so, you know, like so, and slap that down. At this point, I think I'm two or three centimeters above. It's a good strength tra strength training. Even though we're not using a, we're not using a lot of power, it's still um, for the pinky. It is more than we're used to using. Wise, it's basically just the uh, basically, of course, uh, basically, uh, it's like the reverse <coughs> wrapping your fingers, this sort of thing, but going in reverse motion. Not even think, not even thinking of playing you know, melody or any kind of music. Oh, this is actually good. Hey, hey everybody. This is a good thing we can practice on too. Um, without thinking of a specific melody, being able to reverse wrap your fingers on the string itself, almost like a tightrope. Having each one plant down solidly and evenly. Da 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 dum. Try and reverse, but I'm not sure what applications there would be for that. Hey, this is actually good for, we could try this for all the strings. Starting. Um, some around, you know, three is sharp. Three to three sharp. Kyle. Remember your blog or live session about what you can do with only positions three and four? Yeah, I was planning to do 
Yeah, what about it? I was actually thinking for the next um, contest and you know theme of the next month is to do you know improv with just using one or two positions. Um, but I need to set up um, some kind of looping thing. I think a good exercise could be to watch that video, but use the middle finger and pinky for those positions. Yeah, that would be good. Um, how about we get into that? So, switching gears for a moment. Um, <clears throat> switching gears for a moment. Um, in some live thing I did once, uh, we're doing improv, uh, kind of getting in the feeling of improvising. And with improv, you don't have to use a lot of notes. It's more about the rhythm that can make it interesting. Like, because um, a lot of people think you have to use the whole fingerboard to keep an improv melody interesting, but no, it's really just getting in tune with the most basic part, the foundation of music, which is rhythm. Um, and to demonstrate that, um, I was showing about about playing, kind of just improvising with only two notes. I think it was just zero, three, four. Most likely, it was using index and ring. But let's do that with index and pinky. This is a lot of fun, I like. Um, I like it. So let me just keep kind of a beat sort of thing, and then let's all just play anything. Whatever kind of sounds good, keep it varied. So. just by keeping that, um, not getting too crazy with the beat, but just kind of keeping it rather solid. Oh, hammer-ons. <clears throat> okay. Um, I, oh man, I wish I, eventually I'm gonna set up the, the amp with the kind of a, a backing track that we can all kind of play with. Um, but until then, let's do this. Let's do a little drill. Um, so this will work both um, the pinky for hammer on and hachiki. Um. I'm holding my bachi and when I got pinky in the right position, it's killing me. What's the difference in having pinky the way it usually is and just keeping it out in front of with the rest of them? Brother used to just keep it this way too. Um, there, I mean, so I guess whatever you just get used to. I almost feel it kind of slip out more. If you got used to it, I think it could work fine. Um, 
with the pinky, it, it sets, personally I find, it sets up the bachi just in the right position. When it's here, I have to kind of awkwardly, or it feels uncomfortable to bend in the right way to get it just right. Um, whereas this, I can actually keep my hand much more relaxed, personally, I find. Um, you know, if I first just get this um, you know, relaxed and feeling comfortable. Either way, I think you have to get used to, if you do it this way, you have to make changes to feel comfortable and to play cleanly. This way, you'll have to get comfortable with this, with this, uh, yeah. Okay, this is a good one. So, we're going to start like before, zero, three, four. Kind of like before. <clears throat> With uh, index and pinky. Then, nino e toe. Zero, three. Zero. Zero, three, four, zero, three, four. Zero, three, four with the pinky. Zero three zero. Just repeat that a few times. Zero three four zero three zero zero three four zero three zero. focus on nailing that pinky down. Oh, Sam, the very end tip of the bocce just snapped off. Sorry to hear that. Is it uh, jagged or did it snap off cleanly? cleanly? And how much? will be zero three four hammering down and then um, hajiki nino ito san uh, three then four same Sam, um, like a few millimeters or so. Next will be four three zero. Four three zero four. Each note four. Uh, open Nino Ito. Snow three. 
Oh, only one millimeter. That's that's lucky. Um, what you can do to kind of smooth it out quickly to cont continue playing, you don't need sandpaper, I don't think. Just use um, kind of a s somewhat coarse rug. Check the camera. Um, you know, like this, and then just briskly rub it back and forth. And usually I find that's enough to to smooth it out quite well. have any questions about this particular drill great idea Carl I like this assuming this is what you're intending of course Make sure to have that clean and not not accidentally kind of brush up against or act not make sure we don't accidentally brush the tip of the bachi on the string as we go up to keep that to keep it sounding clean. other um, melodies, personal cam. Uh, you don't have to do that exact one. Let's try something else. to use the middle finger instead of the index. Oh, wow. Um, middle finger instead of the index, which is part of the original exercise. Oh, I see. Yeah, you're right. For doing that, um, yeah, we could do that. Yeah, Reagan says, if the acrylic is used well, um, 
he likes it because it's lighter and he's an advocate of you know light as possible for bocce and i was you know going with the nita approach they use really heavy bocce and i always said that was the you know follow anitas because they have such a good tone but reagan also has such a good tone so i guess both is good and um fun fact uh, the i see him and his father often or at least now they have these kind of wrist patches to kind of help soothe their wrists just from you know perform they perform a lot you know and for decades um, but i think with heavy bocce and all that it just kind of damages that area maybe so i think reagan's onto something with light as possible for bachi um i lost my train of thought oh right um so yeah with with this whoop, um using yes as carl said to train us for this other drill um We'll be, well, we, we would use middle for three, pinky for four. I think, though, when I do this, I slide up. Um, so it's a bit more comfortable in terms of how much spread. So that same way, if we do... You might find yourself the rest of your hand coming up like this, which is okay. Kind of grouping together a little bit. Or maybe not, I don't know. Who, who knows? It's important not to overthink it. Ooh, that is a good um, training exercise. Especially for me, I'm finding it uh, the challenge being this hachiki. Oh. I think I have to make the pinky keep it up a bit more to get the right kind of grip on it. Connor, um, when I'm doing tsukui, my wrist hurts. Ah, yes. Um, let's take a quick look at that. Um, oh, wait. Carl, I th I, Kyle, I think this may be too awkward an exercise considering that if you do if you do this, you usually have to have your index on two, so my bad. Carl, what are we going to do with you? Okay, quick about Skui. Um, uh, yes, this can hurt, but it shouldn't if done right. I mean, you know, um, th there's a way we can do it so it doesn't hurt as much. Um, one is... Let's see. Just some principles or some basic fundamental technique things about Tsukui, having, which might help, one, having the bachi parallel uh, to the strings, like so, holding it so it is parallel, not digging in too far this way, or too much this way, just parallel like so. And then, using your index finger as um, a fulcrum, I believe that's the right word, Or at least, I don't know, at least curling it under a bit more feeling, I feel at least, the ridge, this first ridge right here on the edge of the bachi there. When it's like this, it gives me, I pull from both the two places I feel the pull, I guess, would be 
back here in my elbow as I pull up here, and my index finger. Ah, I see, so I'm hooking. I'm hooking especially with the index finger. Um, as it pulls up back here. Perhaps doing that, see if that eases the, any tension on your wrist. Um, you, know, you feel it a bit. You feel the tug, but it shouldn't be, it shouldn't hurt. So a quick look. Um, um, let's see. Okay, yeah. Just do a quick run through of the two drills again. Again, we'll bid you all adieu. in between, I mean, uh, time-wise, rather than, um, rather than, um, yeah, just make sure there's, each one is a 16th note, I guess, not getting closer or whatever, as if it was. So, oh, we're past an hour. Um, let's see. Thanks, Carl, for all the tips, Errol, for helping people out. Thank you, Johnny, for coming with the shovel. Thank you, Connor, for saying hi and joining in. Great to have you here. Thank you, Jose, for making your contest entry and coming um, to the show. Um, if we can call it a show. Ben Allen, glad you came. Where was your uh, your contest entry? I'm disappointed in you. No, I'm not. Only slightly. That's okay. Next time. Uh, Sam Pepper, glad you made it. Uh, and everyone else here. So, <clears throat> uh, next week, Tuesday. Anything happening Tuesday? Probably not. We could do a live lesson Tuesday. We'll see what happens. Um, my friend Grant, Shami Sensation Rhymer, is working on, uh, is helping me out with the, um, the webpage for Bocce on the Horn, the podcast with Mike and myself. So if all goes well, uh, you know, soon, maybe in a week or two or so, 
we will have that out. So stay tuned for that. Um, Kev, um, Kevin, Mike Penny will be here next week. Um, so most likely Friday, tomorrow, we will have another live lesson. Tomorrow of next week, um, the 21st, we'll do a live thing. Um, where am I going? Podcast. Thank you for joining. Um, take vacation. Now, let me turn this off again. <laughs>